Richard Taylor. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. I am Richard Taylor, District 1. And on June the 28th of this year, in District 4, young man Jaden Van, 19 years old, was killed in Willow Run. Uh, the individuals that killed him was one of three individuals uh, known to police. Uh, Daniel Ortiz Roden, Grace Ellen Riley, and Edward, Eduardo Nuarez, three people. And originally the police put out the narrative that it was a botched robbery. And that is somewhat <laughs> true. However, there is a video, a clear cut video, which puts the incident in context. Uh, there was a video, and if you guys need to see the video, I will send it to you. Uh, Jaden and his a friend walked up to the back of a car, had about a two second interaction with another individual who was standing at the back of the car. Jaden and the other gentleman ran. The gentleman that they had the interaction with ran the other way. About two seconds later, an individual gets out of the car who had no interaction with Jaden and the other gentleman. Chased Jaden and the other gentleman down, shot him, and killing Jaden. And so, I think everyone in here, including the police officer right there, would agree that that is not self-defense. And speaking with members of the family, they are dissatisfied with the communication that they have got from Goldsboro Police Department. I've been told by someone close to the situation that Goldsboro Police Department has handed the decision to charge those three individuals over to the DA. Consequently, the DA has informed the family that they are not going to charge anyone. Uh, the first reason was they didn't know who was with Jaden. However, uh, the, someone close to the situation sent me a picture of Jaden and another individual only 10 minutes before the shooting, right in the same area that the shooting happened. So that would <coughs> dispute that excuse. So I'm imploring you, city attorney, uh, <coughs> Chief West in his absence, and all of you leaders up here, uh, to enact justice uh, for that family uh, because anyone who looks at that video would see that there is no self-defense that is clear-cut murder you can't shoot someone in the back the person got it who got out of the car was not in any imminent danger so we're going to continue to keep this matter in front of you until you know the family to see some semblance of justice. That's how All right, what's going on, ladies and gentlemen? Uh, that clip that you just saw was from the Goldsboro City Council meeting uh, this past Tuesday. And I was speaking during a public comment section uh, where I was detailing the case, uh, the murder of Jaden Van and the failure of Goldsboro Police Department and the Wayne County District Attorney's Office to prosecute uh, the known assailants that are responsible for taking Jaden's life. Now, I am going to play the response that the mayor gave me, which is the highlight of the video. Now, that incident that you just heard about and I detailed happened June 28th. And as of today, September the 4th, Despite the video, and I'm going to play the video too, despite the video as well as, you know, the just the clear cut evidence of a murder, they have still yet to prosecute. Now, listen to the response uh, that Mayor Gaylor, who was also a lawyer, gave in regards uh, to that dissertation. Uh, just listen with me real quick. I have one simple question. Don't don't put yourself in any compromised situation. You're fine. A lot of the videos that go out, by the time they get secondhand, thirdhand, fourthhand, it's difficult to um, 
it's difficult to validate the video and the person that took the video and then they end up not being admissible as evidence in a criminal trial and I've had conversations with prosecutors I'm not going to say say who or which that get very very frustrated because they can clearly see but you can't validate who took the video and show a chain of custody in the evidence piece if you or anyone else who is listening can help with that piece of it ensuring that whoever captured the video is willing to say even quietly until trial I captured that video and put ownership on it to where that the evidence and the chain of evidence can can stand up to trial it will help now don't again don't put yourself in any sort of compromised position that is a consistent piece of feedback that I that I've gotten and I'll also want to try to help because it will help the effectiveness of the policing that when things get handed over to the DA's office that then they're able to actually put something together that a grand jury would indict on right so I'm gonna stop it right there before I play my response so if you hear the mayor and you understand him what he's saying that the problem with the video that you and I and probably thousands of people have seen by now that there would be a problem of verifying the chain of evidence, meaning I got the video or someone else got the video, the residents that the video was recorded on, the residential camera that that video was recording on is still available. So he's saying the fact that if the DA gets my video, that it can't be verified as coming from the house that is clearly shown in the video it can't be verified that it came from that source now which is understandable however the problem is and you will see in the video that the family who stays in that house actually came outside after the shooting looking out you can clearly see the family who lives in that house coming outside and so the fact that an individual close to the family went to the scene went to the scene looked over the shooting and compared the scene with the trajectory of the video looked over and was able to go to that direct house and ask those individuals for that video and obtain that video for me to be able to show you guys right now. Why can't Goldsboro Police Department do the exact same thing to verify that chain of command? Now, it's obvious if a young person who has no police experience, no detective experience, can look at that scene, go to that scene, and look at the trajectory of the video then why not detectives with years of experience be able to do the same thing? And so that is a part of the problem. It is the legal maneuvering or the legal posturing or the legal excusing of why they can't prosecute. Best believe if this was another situation with another demographic of individuals that video would already be entered into evidence and that those assailants would already be in custody. So, you know, while I like Mayor Gaylor, uh, I respect his position as a mayor, uh, this answer that he's given me is unacceptable. In my opinion, it's a bunch of legal mumble jumbo because if you've ever been in court, lawyers have the ability to manipulate laws in order to say we can't prosecute them or we can prosecute them. And so if you're listening to this video, Mayor, Chief, how how can you not look at that scene and go back and look at that video, which, yes, is a secondhand video, but why can't you go to that residence that the residence is clearly on the camera in trajectory to the shooting. So a novice individual, 
uh, who is no, you know, no older than 25 years old, they can look at that scene and go to the individual's house and request it without opposition. You guys have the power to subpoena the video, to command or demand the video as a part of an investigation. So, you know, I hate to say it, but that, that, that answer is, you know, non-consequential. It, uh, it, it, is, it, it is not acceptable. It is unsatisfactory uh, because we all know, we can see, and I'm going to play this video right now for you, but before I play it, I'm going to play you my response uh, to Mayor Gaylor's uh, assertion. I understand, and to answer that, the video was taken from a camera in a person's home, in, the, in their garage, and you can actually see the person come out. And so, I mean, I don't think that is too hard for the yeah, And I wasn't speaking about any, any specific video. That was kind of a, a general oh, okay. thing, because I know, you, yeah, was, I know you're, you're very good at helping to get the word out and get specific messaging out that can, that can help make things happen. All right, well, thank you all for listening. Thank you. Thank you. Madam Deputy Clerk, is there anyone else to come forward? And so, you see how he cut me off. Before I can make the point that I just made to you guys, I don't see how that the Goldsboro Police Department cannot go exactly to that residence and get that camera to help solve the murder that was listed as murder on the police report. And just for measure, just for good understanding, watch this video right here with me. And so, as you can see from that video, at the end of the video, uh, the people who stay at that house come out of the door. Uh, and it's evident that that camera is probably in a corner of the carport, like many people have cameras in corners of their house or carports. So, it is definitely able for police to identify where the video came from, go to the person, people who live there, and I not even request it as a part of a death investigation, a murder investigation, they have the power, the eminent domain to confiscate that footage. And so I want the answer to the question, why has not it not been done? Is this not a priority for the Goldsboro Police Department, the Wayne County District Attorney's Office? And, you know, now I'm going to put the ball in the Goldsboro City Council and the mayor's court as well. You know, and I won't, I, I won't, you know, talk about certain conversations that I've had with certain individuals who feel the same way. And so um, I think this is definitely a miscarriage of justice, but it's also an example of how um, lawyers, DAs and police can use these nominal legal tactics to make an excuse of why they can't prosecute a clear-cut murder. 
But once again, as I told them, we're going to continue to keep this issue at the forefront uh, because once again, um, you know, as the great Martin Luther King said, injustice anywhere is a threat to justice everywhere. 919-587-7782. Uh, peace and blessings. Thank you all for listening. From local stories to Wayne County news, get ready to dive into everything happening in North Carolina with Taylor House Publishing. Got a story to share? Shoot us an email at taylorpublishinghouse at gmail.com. If you're looking to publish your book or need some top-notch mentorship, we've got your back. Join the excitement with the one and only Richard Taylor, right here at Taylor House Publishing. Speak with Richard directly at 919-587-7782. Don't forget to smash that like button, hit subscribe, and invite your family and friends to watch. From Lake County to the Carolina Coast, Taylor House bring the news you love most. Tune in on YouTube, don't miss a beat. Local stories that keep you with your Taylor House, we've got the school. Thank you.